I swear. We haven't had wind for two weeks and I haven't seen a car all morning. But the second you get the camera out. Anyway, howdy folks, welcome back. This is a 2015 Chevy Colorado. Belongs to a YouTube viewer. It's here for a few things, but the main one is he wants to install a trailer hitch and he also wants wiring for lights and a brake controller. So I don't know if that's something you guys are interested in, but I'll show you how I do it. It's hot today, isn't it, pup? Yeah, been hot all week. My wife's a school teacher. She went back to school uh, two weeks ago, I think. Well, a week and a half ago. Of course, the second week of school, we would have a heat wave. And as a general rule, schools here are not air conditioned. So they've been on shortened schedules and it's been kind of a mess. Okay, let's get to it. So the first step in installing a trailer hitch, you need to do a little survey of the vehicle and make sure it's structurally sound. So normally that's not an issue with pickup trucks that have a real frame or especially a C-frame. Where you get in trouble is on SUVs or minivans where you're attaching the hitch to the subframe and the subframes are all rotted out. But that's not an issue here. This truck is pretty clean. And step two, you need a hitch. Now when I was a kid my dad used to install a lot of trailer hitches and back then a hitch was something that you built. But nowadays it's something that you buy. This is a Kurt, I believe it's a class 3 hitch, rated for 8,000 pounds gross, which is probably all you're going to want to tow with a Chevy Colorado. Made in the USA and it looks pretty substantial. So let's get it unpacked and see if it'll fit. So we have to drop the spare tire, which usually in this area involves cutting something. But this truck's pretty clean, so we'll be fine. Well, that was pretty easy. Now, it looks like our hitch replaces this factory bumper support bracket. It's four big bolts on either side that had to come out. But I think this outside bracket that goes down to the the lower part of the bumper is going to stay. And I'm not sure about this little brace that goes up to the spare tire support. So we'll figure that out as we go. Now these chassis bolts typically will have Loctite on them. But worse than that, they'll have the best kind of Loctite, which is rust. So don't go crazy. And an impact really helps, if possible. I like to work them back and forth a little bit. Come on. Okay. We just got this little Astro 1828 3 8 impact. Just a hair larger than the Nano. But it's also got a little more whack. Bumper's loose.
Alright guys, the hitch itself is in place. I ended up dropping it back down and taking a hammer and just whacking those ears out a little bit so it wasn't so tight around the frame rail. And then I used these bar clamps to pull it up into place. So I've got bolts on either side so it can't go anywhere now. Well the next step is wiring. So next to the license plate there's a little cap here. And if you have the factory towing package, I believe that's where your trailer connector would be located. Now you can buy a replacement connector that fits right into this hole right here. In fact, I even have one here at my local auto parts store, but they don't have the pigtail that goes on the back side of it, so it doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So what we're going to use is a generic 7-pin receptacle like this, and it comes with a little mounting bracket like this, but I think it'd be better to put it in the same location where the factory connector would go. So I just grabbed a sheet of aluminum, I think it's 60 thousandths thick aluminum, and laid out the same pattern from the bracket. We're going to cut that out and make a little plate to go where this thing was. That'll work. Well now the fun part, gotta hook up all the wires. And it looks pretty easy on this truck. Credit where credit is due. I have to say in the last maybe 20 years or so, these manufacturers, especially of pickup trucks, have they finally figured out that people wanna pull trailers and they're gonna put trailer hitches on their vehicles. And they've actually decided to go ahead and give us a way to do that from the factory. Now this truck does not have a towing package if it had a towing package, there should be a connector right here, and all we have to do is just clip into the connector and away we go. But since we don't have the towing package, what we have is these blunt cut wires right here. So there's one for the marker lights, left turn, right turn, and the backup lights. Now it would appear we have the same thing for the brake controller. So underneath the dash, there should be some more blunt cut wires. One's gonna come from the BOO, the brake on off switch and fused power, and then there should be one that runs all the way back here for the brakes, another one that's just a power all the time, and a ground. So if I'm reading this right, we should not have to run any new wires. Now what's nice about this is that GM uses the body control module and separate relays to control the left and right turn signal. So just for comparison, this is a wiring diagram for a 95 Ford F-250. This is what I had to do when I put a trailer hitch on my own truck. So down here, the provision for the trailer lights is they just splice into the tail lights, you know, cut the harness and splice in, and you're supposed to add a 10 amp fuse. The problem is you have an old school mechanical flasher up here, and the flasher, you know, the, the pulse duration is controlled by, partially by the resistance of the circuit. That's why when your tail light goes out, it flashes real fast. So what happens is if you put a trailer on this that has too much current draw on either of the tail lights, it'll flash really slow, or in some cases it won't flash at all. So the workaround for that is to use a heavy duty flasher, but that's not a great solution. So what you're supposed to do, if your 95 Ford has a factory towing package, they actually have a separate relay. It comes in a little box, you put it next to the, the fuse box under the hood, and it gives you relay control over the left and right turn lamps, so you don't have that problem with the flasher. I don't know if you can buy those new. The best thing to do is to find, you know, go to the junkyard and find a truck that has a towing package and just grab that relay box. And that'll take care of the, the issue for you. But with this Colorado, we don't have to worry about it. They've, they've already thought of it. So right here on the frame rail should be all the wires that we're gonna need. So it looks like we got brown for our marker lights, green and yellow for left and right turn, blue, not sure, this gray one I think is the backup lights. And the big fat ones are probably for the brakes. 
I'm just going to clip and strip all these wires. We're not going to use these hokey. non-sealed butt connectors. That's just asking for trouble. Now on the chassis side, some of these are hot at all times, I think, so might be a smart idea to unhook the battery. But danger is my middle name, so we're gonna let it ride. Okay, everything I think is wired. For the most part, they're color to color. The only ones that are different, the ground on the chassis is black, and on the pigtail it's white. The auxiliary power on the chassis is orange, on the pigtail it's black, and then this one here is for the backup lights, are red on the pigtail and gray on the chassis. The other ones are all color for color. So I crimped those with uninsulated butt connectors, and then I'm going to stick this adhesive line shrink tube over top of it, shrink it all down, wrap it up, and away you go. So no matter what we do, we're going to have a big wad here. Just, unless we wanted to cut all the wires and stagger them. Which I don't think I quite have enough wire to, to waste any. Okay, that's it. We're all wired up. Okay guys, I think we're done underneath the truck. I got all the bolts torqued to factory spec, 100 foot-pounds. All of our wiring is loomed up tied up looks good and then I did jam a piece of loom wrap in between the self-tapping screws and that other wiring harness just so we don't have any little accidents there squirted some fluid film inside the connector so we don't have any rusty nastiness going on inside of there uh, the spare tires back up the only thing I don't know is if we're gonna have problems because we don't have that bracket in the middle for the spare tire. There's nothing on the new hitch for that to attach to, so I don't really see any choice but to leave it out. So, yeah, we don't need any more things rattling around down here. Check out this heat shield. That's actually how it's attached. It just has some little plastic rivets through there. It's gotta make a racket going down the road. All right, the last step is to install this little guy, which is the trailer brake controller. And the wires that we need are going to be on the driver's side underneath of this kick panel. And right down here, you're going to see the two big connectors for the instrument panel. And tucked up right here are the blunt cut wires that we need for the controller. Alright, to connect our brake controller, we're going to use this universal pigtail adapter. Here's the part number for it, Hopkins 47685. Now they make vehicle specific ones, like for the Fords, I know they have one that plugs right into the harness, but because this one's got those chopped off wires, we'll use the universal. So the, this length of wire is gonna determine where we're gonna mount our brake controller. So we'll go ahead and get this installed. I got my, I've got my uninsulated butt connectors here and my shrink tube ready to go, so we'll just Splice it in. Now everybody always asks me where I get these uninsulated connectors and the shrink tube. You can get them from any wholesale electrical supply company, you know, DigiKey or Mauser or whatever. I actually buy them from McMaster Car. And originally I had bought this kit that contains, you know, everything you would you would want. 
And there used to be a seller on Amazon that sold these, but I think they're they're gone or something has changed and it's not available anymore. This connectorsupply.com doesn't exist. So anyway, that's what I do. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. We're going to use all four wires. And I think Yeah, I think some of these are hot at all times too. Yeah, we'll just be careful. Alright, we're going to do the ground first. So that's white on this harness and black on the truck side. Now we're going from about a 14 gauge wire down to about a 20 gauge wire, so let's see how this goes. I don't know why they have such a large wire in the, the harness here for the controller, because this is just the ground that powers the controller itself. The, the trailer connector has its own ground. blue to blue. Now, black wire is going to be our power, and that's going to hook to this other big guy, which is red with light green. And the last one is our BOO break on off switch. That's going to be red to the white with a blue stripe. Now the beauty of having the wiring diagram is we don't have to go through and test all this stuff beforehand. But if you didn't have a wiring diagram, that's all you have to do is just, you know, activate each function and use the test light, see which wire does what. And the light's dead. There we go. All right, I got the brake controller mounted on the right side of the knee bolster. This truck has a center console, so that's as far over as I can get it. Normally, I like to put them basically in the center of the dash, but yeah, not a lot of options here. I need a longer piece there, guy. Well, we'll tuck it up here above the DLC connector. And let's put that around the other way.
Alright guys, I think we're all good. Brake controller installed. Trailer wiring hooked up. Trailer hitch installed. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, it's a little crooked, a little off center. Gives it that homemade look. Uh, it also needs rear axle brakes. And then I think we're going to do some undercoating. Probably spray some cavity wax inside this box frame. And I'm doing an oil change right now. Well, he was complaining about a slow leak in the right rear tire. So, there's your problem. Now, I recently bought some tire machines. We got a Coates 1250 balancer and a Hunter X505 tire machine. But I don't have them wired up yet. I haven't actually used them myself. They both work, but I don't have any weights or anything like that. So I think I'll probably just take it up to the tire shop, have them do it. But eventually I want to get these working and I'm probably going to make a whole video about buying these machines and getting them set up because it's been uh, quite an ordeal. Well, I'm in a bit of a time crunch today, so I think we're going to do these brakes V-Core style. Well, it works better when he does it. You guys should check out V-Core. I'll put a link in the description. Guy does some pretty amazing work rebuilding wrecked cars, which, you know, that's a pretty crowded field on YouTube, but he really knows what he's doing. I'm going to use some of this 3M cavity wax, part number 08852. You also have to buy the applicator kit. It's this long straw. It comes with three different lengths. That's part number 08851. You should be able to buy this stuff at any place that sells automotive paint. Anyway, the idea is you stick the long straw up inside of a closed area like a door panel or frame rail or whatever, and you can spray this cavity wax inside, and it stops the panels from rusting from the inside out. Now, by no means am I a rust proofing expert. There's places you can take your vehicle that specialize in this kind of stuff. So on this Colorado, the major thing we're worried about is the box frame. And a lot of trucks now are using box frames, probably because it's lighter, but it's an a recipe for corrosion. So we're gonna do the box frame. And then things like the cross members underneath of the box, those have a tendency to rust out. And then of course on any GM, it's going to be the rocker panels. So this one already has some, some grommets in it. Now this truck does have coated brake lines, but we're probably still going to spray those down. And then these spring brackets, those like to rust really badly. That's a terrible design that Chevy has used forever. Those get packed full of crud and rust out the U-bolts. You'll also want to do things like this little subframe underneath the cab and the fuel lines. You could probably do the cross members too, like this transmission cross member would be a good idea. And then usually you can access the rear fender arch through one of the stake pockets. And then if you're ambitious, you can do the doors. Just pull the door panel and spray down inside there. That's probably safe. All right, folks, there you go. How to install a trailer hitch on your 2015 Chevy Colorado. Pretty easy job. And mostly that's because the manufacturer was nice, gave us all the wiring that we needed. We didn't have to run any new wires. Now, if you do have to run wires, it's not a big deal. Just make sure you use a proper automotive wire that's SAE rated. Make sure you use some loom wrap or whatever to protect it. And then use the proper you know, splices or connectors, whatever you want to use, shrink fit butt connectors or solder and shrink wrap, whatever you prefer. But do not use these junk scotch locks that come with the kits or these open butt connectors. That's just asking for trouble. I mean, unless you live in Florida or something, you're going to have problems. Now, if I have to get power for the brake controller, usually just use an inline fuse holder like this. I'll take power directly from the feed for the fuse box and then you know run it wherever you need to go. And like I said, with some of the older vehicles that use those old flashers, a lot of times you do have to add relays in order to make the, to make the trailer lights work correctly. So you also need to be careful with the body bolts, especially where we live. This is one I drilled out of a Dodge Caravan last week. So same deal. They were installing a trailer hitch. You gotta remove five body bolts 
out of the subframe, then then the, you reuse those bolts to attach the, the hitch while well, they broke two of them off. And the shop was actually gonna let it go, just you know, attach the hitch with three out of the five bolts, so it only would have had one on one side. So you don't wanna do that. Anyway, drill them out, no big deal. A lot of shops won't touch trailer hitches, and I don't know exactly why. If it's an insurance issue, you know, liability or or what the deal is, but it's easy money as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Why did I volunteer for this? All right, folks, the outro is the hardest part of the video, so I'm gonna outsource it to the missus. There you go, folks. That's how you install a trailer hitch in a Chevy Colorado F-150. Not even close. 2015 Chevy Colorado. 2015 Chevy Cal Colorado. All right, shall we start over? I have no idea. There you go, folks. That's how you install the trailer hitch of a 2015 Chevy Colorado. Uh, don't do anything that Wes told you not to do throughout the video. And make sure you use these nice scotch locks. Do not use the scotch locks. That are in the kit. Yeah, don't use them. You just told oh. them to use them. I thought you told me to use these nice new ones that you bought. All right, folks, this is, a, this is un, an unmitigated disaster. Then why am I holding these Your things? Your son is knocking the camera over. My wife is telling people to use the, <laughs> the worst wiring invention ever, ever the, conceived. Then why do I have to hold them? It's just supposed to show people what not to use. Oh, then Child. can I throw them in the trash? Yes. Hold. Child, I will sell you on the black market. Okay, please give people a visual demonstration of what to do with the scotch locks. Okay, visual de demonstration. We have to throw these away. Throw, throw them in there. I, I want to build something. We are not building anything with the scotch locks in this shop. That's what we're supposed to do. That's All right. Daddy said. We got the point across. There you go, folks. Installing a trailer hitching a 2015 Chevy Colorado. It's not a hard job. Just try to do a good job with the wiring. 